All right. So welcome to the Data Vote Friday. Uh, my name is William Brunner. I'm a BI consultant here at Scalfree. And today I'm replacing Michael. Um, he's still on vacation. Yeah, so we run the session every Friday, 11 a.m. Central European time. And in this session, we're going to answer basically um, all kinds of questions um, regarding yeah, big data, data vault, um, basically any data-driven uh, topics. Um, if you have questions uh, before and you can uh, submit them uh, via a form. Um, I will show you the link uh, to the form at the end of the session or directly um, here into the chat or Q&A section. So today's um, topic is about uh, information delivery with uh, multi-activity. We have one um, question um, with a dimension with three uh, standard satellites and uh, one of the satellite is a, um, is a multi-active satellite and all satellites are attached to the same hub. Um, and the multi-active satellite has a multi-active attribute included. And yeah, basically the question is if there's a best practice um, regarding data vault uh, modeling approach. Um, yeah, short answer, you can uh, use a pit table also for multi-activity. And in the next um, slides, I will show you how to slightly modify the standard pit um, table for it. So um, at the beginning, let's uh, quickly recap how a multi-active satellite, um, how the structure is um, is built. So we use a multi-active satellite if there's uh, more than um, one record active at the same time for one business key. Um, so compared to a standard satellite, um, we need an additional attribute um, or addi an additional key to make one record unique um, in the satellite. So we have um, in, the set in a standard satellite, we would have the hash key and the load date timestamp for a primary key. And um, in the multi-active satellite, we need an additional attribute. In this case, it's the um, type code um, of the phone number. So um, hash key, customer, load date, timestamp, and the type code is unique for each record in this multi-active satellite. Um, if there's no, um, like uh, something you could use uh, for a multi-active attribute, which is coming from the source, um, you have to add a subsequence number to make the primary key um, unique. Um, yeah, so in this example, we have three records um, or three um, on this with the same uh, load date timestamp. And to make it unique, we have a type code, which is home, business, and mobile for each uh, phone number. And now we want to query this um, uh, data yeah, out of the multi-active satellite. Um, so you could use a standard pit table to get the data out. Um, a pit table basically um, has one record per snapshot um, date per business key. So um, in this case, we have um, the hash key customer, um, which which has uh, three different records. Each of um, those records, yeah, the first record is on the first of uh, January, second January, and third uh, of January, um, which is the snapshot date in the end. And the pit table has a reference to all the attached um, satellites. So a reference to the um, primary key. So in this case, we have uh, two uh, satellites um, inside this uh, pit table, which is the address satellite and the phone satellite. Um, the address satellite, um, yeah, let's assume that this one is a standard uh, satellite, which has um, the uh, reference to the hash key and the address. And as we have uh, seen in the previous example, the phone satellite is multi-active, but in this case, we have um, only the hash key and the load date timestamp, which 
is not unique um, to identify one single um, telephone number, but in this way, we can um, identify the whole group of um, yeah um, of of one business key. So all three different kinds um, of telephone numbers, if needed. So with a standard satellite, it's possible to um, to get a group of multi-active attributes. Um, and in the next slide, I'm gonna show you how to slightly um, extend the standard PIT table. Here we go. Yeah, so here um, we have to add the um, multi-active attribute uh, to the PIT structure if we want to get a single record. So as I said, in the multi-active uh, satellite, one single record is identified by the parent hash key, the load date timestamp, and the multi-active attribute. And in this case, we have to um, extend um, the phone satellite reference by the um, type code. And which record you want to see, it's basically a business rule. So um, in this case, um, I assume that we want to just see the mobile phone um, of the uh, of the business key. But yeah, it's basically um, a business rule. Um, it's also possible to pivotize the data. So for each multi-active attribute, you could add a reference um, to the pit. So yeah, there's basically a trade-off between uh, storage and performance because um, you could imagine that the pit table could be or can be, yeah, can get really, uh, really big if we if you um, extend it um, by every multi-active um, satellite um, key. Yeah, so that's basically the um, solution for uh, querying multi-active um, satellites. We teach this use case also in our information delivery training. Um, so if, if you're interested in it, um, check out our website. So yeah, um, we have again this year the, the Data Dreamland um, here directly in Hanover in uh, October on the 10th and uh, 11th. Um, so if you're interested, um, we have a homepage um, for the Data Dreamland um, at scalefree.com slash DDL23. Yeah, if you have further questions, um, you could use this form to su submit your questions. Um, thanks for coming. Um, I wish you a nice weekend and see you hopefully next Friday. Bye bye. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on, on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.